Hello lovely people and welcome to my channel. This is a camellia flower from my camellia bush and I just thought that it looked really lovely and matched the cover. So I went and I picked out one. So I'm sending you flowers wherever you are. So today's post is a browse through of the Birda May 2021 issue. I normally do my browse throughs with the German issue. However, my subscriber has informed me that it's unclear when or even if I should be getting the German issue. There have been some problems and uh, pro uh, I don't know what's going on with that. But I have the English issue for this month. So this is the cover for the English translation, which I have to say is um, an interesting change to get the English translations. Um, and I thought, oh yeah, so it's going to be a lot easier. At least I'll have instructions. And when I was looking at some of the patterns, deciding what I wanted to make, I went to quickly read the instructions and I was just like, nope, not much difference between <laughs> not being able to understand the instructions too much in German versus actually having it written in English. And I was like, oh, bless you, Berda. Anyway, let's get started um, on it. So we've got this beautiful color dress at the front. And I thought that that's a nice, um, strong pow pow start. So we've got all the styles at a glance, which is uh, different. Okay, and here we go. So we've got um, this Mexican style, I believe it's called a huipli, which is a very made quite iconic by the images that you see of Frida Kahlo where she's wearing something similar with sort of like a square neckline and they've used a folkloric type fabric for it which I think is lovely and it makes it pop. I thought that the styling on here was really quite good with um, the slouchy boots and everything and if you look at the line drawing you know we can see that you can do a lot with this style in terms of playing around with contrasting fabrics like texture blocking or you could go for color blocking or you could go for mixing up um, prints and this is such a versatile style because it's got a belt and you I mean, you could make it without a belt if you wanted to go for that sort of merchant and meals look where you just have the denim, you know, or just like a linen fabric. And I think it would be lovely. And I don't think that this style is limited to just using wovens. You could easily use French terries or ponties or even jerseys and still be able to create something quite nice and comfortable. So I thought that this wasn't too, um, too bad. And then we have over here a really lovely looking... Um, shorty shorty short <laughs> sweater dress and i quite like this um, for two reasons it's got a hoodie right and i do like using my hoodie a lot because of Raynaud's syndrome i do tend to need extra layers to keep myself um, nice and warm but this has got a v-neck which gives me the option of actually making this as a summer style thing that i could wear um, using a lighter weight fabric so I quite liked this and I like the fact that it's got these kangaroo pockets because pockets are everything the hoodie it's one of those three-piece hoodies which I find fit a lot better than the hoodies that just have the one seam at the back so I thought that this is a good one and I'm actually heads up you don't even have to wait until the end of the video but I'm actually going to be using this lovely uh, sweater French terry sweater fabric to make this so that this can be kind of like a summer uh, sweater dress lightweight enough for me to wear during um, the cooler parts of uh, spring and summer I am going to lengthen it slightly though because this is a very tall model and it's you know um, it's really quite short I think so I would lengthen it slightly so that it hits uh, mid thigh so I quite like that one and then we've got the wrap skirt, the foul wrap skirt that caught my eye. So this is in the plus size, uh, sorry, the tall sizes, the 72 to 88. And what they've done with this one is they've added these trims along or used the selvage. And it just looks really, really gorgeous. And I like the fact that you're playing with angular geometrics over here. And you could have a lot of fun if you used a stripe, like a linen stripe fabric. I can see this one becoming a popular pattern. And it looks like on the back, it's just got like a little bit of an elasticated um, waist there. So I thought that this was a, 
you know, I, I felt like this was a good start to the issue. And then we've got a poncho style, um, kaftan style, which is really, really super, super simple. I've made something similar from a 20 June 2016 issue. And honestly, this type of thing, you will just wear so much, especially during the hot, hot summer days and you just want something that allows a breeze to come through i made mine in a linen viscose and yeah it get it gets loads of wear so this is dead simple dead easy to make and it's got some button some holes that you probably use button your buttonhole feature so that you can thread a belt through as you can see um, over there and i think that this is uh, most efficient use of fabric and I love the fabric that they used on there it's very popping and very colorful I probably wouldn't make this because um, I already have another <laughs> pattern from the June 2016 issue that does the exact same thing um, over there and then over here we've got a peasant style top which I feel um, I think that this top was in the plus size section of the previous issue and I think it's, you know, it's cute if you just want to do something that will, um, you know, just be a nice off shoulder top with some shearing over there. And they've added a pom pom trim at the bottom just to give it that lovely, folk, you know, prairie folkloric look and fabulous. OK, so the petite size pattern is this lovely, interesting looking orange color top that caught my eye. It's got pin tuck details um, over here and it looks like it's got some sort of a box pleat feature on the front just to add a little bit more volume uh, past the shaping of the bust. I imagine that the, uh, the pin tucks have got some bust shaping. Round neck and again we've got the panel feature at the back and the pleat over there. This caught my eye in the preview and it really does confuse me because of how uh, tight it looks on her and they've used a viscose fabric but it just looks really um, tight and uncomfortably so and I think that that's a shame that uh, I think it takes away from it as you can if you look a little bit closer let's have a look can you see how it's sort of like really pulling away over here so I'm not getting a good sense of how this is actually supposed to um, to sit uh, on there. If I were to make it, I would not bother doing all of these uh, fabric covered pat uh, buttons because those are th those are not a lot of fun to to do, and it's not necessary to have you know all of these. I think it's two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, <laughs> 16 buttons. And then you have to do the button loops to go with it. I just think that it is unnecessary. I wouldn't do that. But I think it's got some interesting, I, I have to wait and see what the Berta Sewing community does with this one before I make up my mind um, about it. And then we have here a pair of high-waisted shorts that I absolutely love because they've got an elasticated waist and they've got the slanted hip pockets, which I think are super comfortable. I have made a pair of high-waisted uh, shorts before and they're so, so comfortable and they get loads of wear. So I was like, this one is definitely something I'd be interested in making. And this definitely caught my eye, this lovely dress with the sweetheart neckline and it's got um, three darts at the bottom there and it's got six more darts over there. So a lot of shaping options around the center. So I was a little bit confused about how this looks like it's a little bit curved and it does seem to be a design feature. I like that it's got pockets because pockets are everything and it's just really, really cute to look at. You know, it's got, it's got lovely loads of details and I was definitely all for making this and I was definitely keen to trace it until I noted that you've got buttons here, but then we don't have any buttons down here. And then looking closer at the pictures, you can see that at the top, the buttons are exposed, but then for the skirt portion, they've done the covered placket or they've used snaps on there. Now, whenever I've used snaps before, on this section that goes from um, waist to hip, I almost always, 
always the snaps will open up and come off. So I don't trust snaps below the waist simply because of the range of movement of my legs. So if I were to make this, which I hope to do at some point in the future, I would not be using snaps. I would probably just do the buttons all the way down. Either that or I would make this into one piece and then I would add a zipper on the side here so that I wear it using the zipper. But I do think that it is a really very beautiful dress. And I think that this is going to be quite popular, especially because of that neckline over here. Right, moving swiftly along, this is the featured sewing pattern, which has got the step-by-step -step lessons, always nice. And then we've got some crafts on how to make sort of like pot covers and be seated please some cushions and there's this really interesting table runner that uses a fabric very similar to a dress that i made about two years ago and i was like oh nice 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 i used table runner fabric to make myself a dress and then unusually <clears throat> for a may issue we got the active wear in the form of yoga pants and yoga wear so very simple leggings with an elasticated waist always useful to have leggings patterns and this is also part of the children's wear section so we've got some really cute little leggings with a waistband and some ruching details with a pull string over here i would do this if i had a lot of time to i quite like the size ranges because um for the kids it's 104 to 128 which is the size range that my children are in at the moment and then we also get like a really nice uh, poncho for yoga which i think is a really good idea because when i do yoga um especially back in the day when i used to go to classes haven't been because of covid re recently but when you start off with the yoga you're quite um uh, cool a little bit on the cold side um, and it's helpful to have something loose and flowy that you can easily pop off you once you've done your first set of sun salutations and then you, you're starting to build up your warmth and your heat and then you can quickly pop it off. And I think that that's quite good. I probably wouldn't do it with the belt though if I was doing it for that purpose, but really cute. And then we've got the leggings again, but this time they're more capri length over there with a little bit of the lace trim. I'm not a big fan of lace trims on leggings because I do find that they get itchy. Um super quick and quite unnecessary and then this top i really did like this top when i saw it in uh, the preview i'm a big fan of high low hems you know the ones that go asymmetrical and i like the fact that they've already built in the use of two different fabrics and i think that you could have fun with this use a jersey for this and use a silk chiffon for that use a jersey use a rayon for that and this could be a good scrap buster project so i was like yep I am in with this one. Haven't figured out which fabrics I'll use yet, but I like that because this has got potential for just being able to use up loads of um, scrap fabrics. And then we've got some uh, wide leg trousers here that you can make with, um, they've made it with viscose here, but I would be looking to make these with like a French terry if I were to make them for workout wear. I don't like the fact that the zipper is on the center back seam. I find that with trousers, this is the most awkward place to have a zipper. I would be moving this to the side um, seam. I have a pair of trousers that I made and I put the zipper on the center back and they just feel so awkward. So I tend to avoid wearing them. And ever since then, all trousers that I make that have a center back zip, uh, zip, I will move it to the side seam, right? And then we've got, oh, just the cutest little kids little jumper set. And this is something that I'm going to be using even for my boys and for the girls as well, because it's a pretty unisex um, style. And then we've got a simple t-shirt here with a flounce at the back. Um, mm -hmm. This one I was just a little bit meh me about and then there's a lovely um little top here uh for 
This one's been designed for girls and it's made in a sweatshirt and fabric. I'm not too sure why you would need to have this back open in here if this is sweatshirt and fabric. This neckline looks to be wide enough for me with a fabric that's got a bit of give to be able to uh, pull it over. So if I were to make it, I would skip that <laughs> thing. Okay, and then we've got the instructions in the middle because this is Berda English. And then we've got that dress that we saw earlier, the one that I'm going to make in this fabric. But this time it's been shortened and made into a sweater by adding um, some ribbing cuffing on there. I think that this is going to be popular as well, especially as we go towards autumn. This is the sort of thing that you can easily layer. And I can see this being made by a lot of people. And I cannot wait to see what the Breda community does with it. And then we've got a lovely t-shirt here. Again, unisex, a beautiful. I like the fact that they've used like a contrasting color for the neckband and they've added this little panel here. It's completely unnecessary, but sometimes you just do things because you can make them look pretty and you could have fun using tiny scraps of really nice fabric, just popping it on there and it just gives it like a nice little pop of color. And we've got another variation of a, what do you call that, bomber jacket. Yeah, I see these so often. But the difference with this one is that we've kind of like got a v-neck rather than the higher uh, crew neck that we tend to have. I'm not a big fan of bomber jackets. I actually, come to think of it, I have never bought a bomber jacket. Not that I can recall. It's, it's never been something. Ah, and then we have the pink jacket, the pink jacket. Oh, and this, this is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at that neckline. I think they call this a portrait or a jewel neckline. And we've got the buttons, the statement buttons, all of the shaping, welt jetted pockets, a sleeve band, covered buttons, and the excellent, outstanding tailoring on there is just a sight to behold and i think this is one of those patterns that everybody will look at and just be like oh my days this would be amazing to have but sadly i don't think a lot of people are actually going to make this because this is a complex thing to make and one thing that i have noted is that sometimes the heart is willing you see something like this and you're like oh yes i want to make this i have to but then when you actually have the time to sew you're going to reach for something simple and easy to sew like that because that's just how it seems to work. And yeah, but it, this is absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's one of those things that if I had the time and the inclination, I might have made it, but I can just look at it and appreciate the tailoring and the excellence that went into it. And then moving on, we have what's called the farm country sew to sew yourself linen lace and floral print floral ha typo it says floral pints <laughs> i just spotted a typo you see that it says floral pints <laughs> i think they meant to say floral prints um yeah i and um, i have to say this was an interesting photo shoot it is it did give me pause uh for chuckling and just you know like really wonder how the set would have looked but let's start off with this um interesting looking dress that has been made in a very uh, pale cream natural look linen with some trims on there and when i look at that it reminded me very much of those 1930s uh, style dresses uh, i don't know if you've ever watched the movie uh, oh brother where art thou with uh, george clooney's Got an excellent soundtrack, that movie. But they were wearing these dresses, a lot of these dresses with a square neckline that sort of goes straight down. So it reminded me of that. And I, I, I don't find this particular fabric inspiring at all. Um, yeah. And then there's this really cute shirt dress, which I really, I feel like it doesn't fit in with the theme of everything else because... Yeah, it, it just sort of comes out of nowhere, but it's a really cute shirt dress and it's got pockets here and these uh, sort of inseam pockets, which 
I consider myself to be a little bit of a pocket expert um, in my years of sewing. I'm, I'm very fussed about pockets and I've got very strong opinions about pockets. And these sort of pockets, they do not work, especially along a gathered panel. Okay, and especially when they're made with a viscose linen brand. So viscose is a very drapey sort of fabric. And when I'm working with viscose and I'm putting in side seam pockets, I always have to reinforce where the pocket seam is going to be so that it doesn't go baggy and it doesn't stretch out. And these pockets are at the front and it just it just doesn't work. And And for me, there is nothing wrong at all in just adding the pockets over on the side seam but I do like it I like it in principle and in theory and I think that it's something that I could make so those high-waisted shorts that I rather liked they've been uh, lengthened and they've been made into uh, trousers and given a belt and so I was like okay okay not so keen on the trousers but definitely keen on the shorts and then we've got that petite top again that was really confusing because it was undersized on the model that they used and then on this model here it it looks a little bit better even though the print is quite busy so you're missing out the pin tuck details but it's still got those those tons and tons of of buttons which i'm sorry but if you're going to be making these buttons a feature like this you gotta use a fabric that's just going to make them pop um yeah but I, again, I still think that this is impractical. You'd have to unbutton at least uh, down to your high bust point before you're able to take this off. If I'm reading the fit correctly, and from what I'm reading from the fit is that this is a very close fitting um, top. So there's, there's some impracticalities about this design um, as far as I can tell. And then we've got a lovely linen print sketchy type uh, fabric here that's been made into these trousers with the belt. And not, not very inspired by that. And uh, mm. <sighs> okay. this dress has got a lot of beautiful details. You know, the little darts over here and the neckline. And this version has got some piping on it and it's got a trim and it's got a curved waist and all of it is wasted with the choice of fabric and the choice of trim on here. Um, I have, yeah, this, um, this does not win any awards for trying to sell the pattern. Without the line drawing and you just saw this, you're really not just going to stop and notice. But thankfully... Thankfully, we do get the line drawings, and I do think that this sells the pattern short. At least it's got the red one, which sort of redeems it. Yeah, we've got that peasant style off shoulder top again, this time with some cute black and pink trim, which got me thinking I would love to do something with the black and pink uh, trim. The wrap skirt shows up again, but this time in just sort of like a really dull, gray, uninspired fabric. You know, nice cabbages though. Nice cabbages. I love cabbages. I'm growing cabbages um, currently. Oh, and then I really liked this jacket number 108. Just a long line cardigan with what looks like a waterfall collar. Definitely something that would be very very useful in early spring make it in a jersey uh, make it in a slinky jersey this could work in a slinky jersey as well so that you've got that uh, drape coming down um yeah and then this really cute looking trench coat which i love the interpretation of using a print fabric um, that they have done and they've done the piping down the gun flap and down the edges of the facing and you know it's busy but it's got some good bone structure. It's got the pointed yoke and some V points. So I think, yeah, I thought that this was quite nice. Um, I have no interest in sewing a trench coat in my current iteration of life um, at the moment. But I can look at them and think one day, one day I will. And, oh, I love the pockets on uh, this trousers. I think slanted patch pockets are just the best. They're just so incredibly useful. And when you make them with contrasting top stitching, they can make a really nice feature. So I thought that this was a nice addition. Uh, also quite like this dress here. Princess seems a uh, pretty awesome. It sort of reminded me of the Dear and Do Bluet dress, except for that one has got um, a bow at the back and i think that 
it's been well tailored on here not a big fan of the color that they have used but it is good tailoring and you could make this with a linen fabric and you've got the options of being able to fit this in fact one of my mom's favorite dresses has got a very similar cut and style and i was like oh my mom would like this and I somehow lost the line drawing for this jacket here, but it's this uh, jacket which has been made in a cotton twill, or you could make this in a cotton drill, and it's got the most practical pockets. It's got patch pockets um, over there. It's got some bust duds for some shaping and a uh, yoke. And I think I think it's it's I think it's a great um, addition to a collection to be able to have that. And then we've got that dress that's just been cut into a shirt and this time they've made it in blue denim and i think oh sorry about that guys hello tripod yeah <laughs> in a blue denim and i think that um as you can see how you do get the fitting around the bust so it is you know it, it is quite versatile because of those princess uh, seam line and then we've got a maxi dress here which um from the line drawings it's not quite clear this to me didn't look like it would go over the bust but it actually does because if you look on the dress that she's actually wearing here it does go um over and under the bust and then it's got the gathered panels it's got the thicker straps here uh, so that you can uh, hide your bra straps because like that's one thing my mom absolutely hates she's always like do not show your bra straps you know so i think it's pretty cool that it's nice and thick wide enough to be able to um uh, cover those up and then we've got those trousers plain simple and i think that they look really elegant and they've been made in a cotton linen and i don't know whether it's the cotton linen because it's like a blue stripe it just looks wonderful and i thought that the styling on this one was just really nice the combination of the wedge espadillas and the lovely white cotton top and the full suede jacket that's just got this loose drapey thing i was just like this is a look i would love to wear because it just looks so elegant and collected and together which is so not me but <laughs> never mind and then finally the thing that we have is top number uh, 127 which has got a nice a twist on the sleeves over there so we've got some bust duds for extra shaping and we've got you know um a nice uh, low round neck and you know, it's it's lovely. I think it does look nice with the um, cotton poplin that they have used because the cotton poplin is able to hold the structure of those gathers uh, together, as you can see over there, and paired with the denim skirt. I just think that it's a look. So that is what we have with this uh, lovely Berda May issue. Okay, I thought that like the cover dress um i hope to have time to be able to make that at some point and i'm going to be making my a lovely summer sweater dress which uh, should be done within the next month or so so that's it guys i hope that you've enjoyed the video and if you did do give it a big thumbs up down below if you haven't already do subscribe i'm crazy about sewing so i put out sewing stuff and look i even paint my nails to match the covers of the bird magazines that's how much i enjoy chatting with you guys about this now it's your turn let me know if there's anything in this issue that you are going to be making or if there's anything that actually caught your eye and until i see you next time guys happy sewing mm -hmm.